Hey guys, Will here with Media Place, and in this video, we're going to take a deeper dive into image editing inside of Media Place and how that can really enhance your workflow. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so first up, I want to come into my libraries here, and I've got my pictures folder selected. I'm going to select this picture here. So now once I select it, you'll see that it opens up some information on the right hand side of my screen, right? So I've got my info, which lays out all the properties for this image, right? From dimensions to size to type, my ratings, the colors that make up this image, as well as where I have this picture stored and if I had tags or if I had notes that were in here, right? Now, if I go over one more, I've got the edit page. Now in the edit page, this is where you can make a lot of cool customizations on the fly. So let's go over the main edit page into itself before we get into all the features on the right hand side over here. All right, so in this top left corner, we've got our select tool, right? So this allows me to select things inside of my image. Um, I've got our panning hand, right? So if I select this, I can then move around and pan on the image, right? So let's say that I use the zoom feature, right? And I'm zoomed in all the way here. And I'm really kind of take a look at my picture, but if I just have the select tool there, I can't move around the image very fast and efficiently, right? Now, if I select the hand tool, I can then move around and sort through my image. Now, a quick shortcut to that is instead of selecting the hand tool, I can hold spacebar down on my keyboard and with that held down, I can then left click and drag around the image into itself and just move around and see what kind of adjustments I wanna make, right? So that's a pretty cool feature um, inside a media place. All right, now if I wanna adjust the zoom, it is right there like I just did. You can put your cursor in there, left click and hold and zoom in a little more or zoom out if I drag to the left, right? Now fit takes me back to the image size of my canvas, right? So if I click on fit, it just puts it back into main view there so I can see it all. Then of course I can click and see a one-to-one -one real image size there. And then again, I can hold space bar and then drag around and see everything that I need to from there, right? So super cool features inside of Media Place. All right, so let's go back to fit. And now let's talk about the quality, right? So quality is not necessarily talking about the quality of the image itself here, it's the quality of your preview. So if I hover over low, you'll see it says, um, you use low quality for a more reactive preview, right? So if I want to, if I'm making adjustments here on the right hand side to maybe contrast and saturation, um, it'll have a more reactive feel for me as opposed to if I have the quality set to high, it might take a second, right? But I just kind of keep it on low and then I, I kind of work from there. All right. Now the resize tool is a really cool feature inside of media place. So when I click on resize, what it does is it allows me to make a quick resize application to this image. So I could come in here and say, maybe I don't want it to be 2000 by 3000, right? Um, so I can either leave this locked to keep the aspect ratio, or if I unlock it, it'll allow me to custom make the ratios. But then again, if I do that and not do it correctly, my image might be stretched, right? So it's just, it's kind of warning me, right? So I'll just keep it locked, but you know, I could bring it in. Maybe I want it to be, you know, 500 by 748. It already calculates the correct aspect ratio for me, right? So that's really cool. And then I can apply the resize and then it will do, it, do its trick for me, right? So I'll go ahead and cancel that because I don't want to resize it right now. Um, now, if I go to crop, it allows me to crop so I can come in here, I can crop the image. Uh, maybe I want it to be just him and the sky, right? So I could do that from there, apply the crop, and then I'd still be able to keep working and editing as I go. They also have some cool custom crops for you already. So I can go 16 by nine ratio. If I'm uh, trying to get something specific for maybe, maybe YouTube or maybe uh, another social media platform, I can do that from here. I can set it to a four, three, um, and then just drag the frame around what I want it to be and go with a one to one and I can go nine by 16, right? Um, I can also customize these, uh, this crop as well. So again, really cool resize and crop features built right into media place that allows you to customize the photos that you have really quickly and efficiently. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the right side of our edit page. So I'm going to start at the top and let's talk about elements. So I'm going to go ahead and select the text element. And what that does is it adds a text box into my image. And if I left click it, I can move it around anywhere on the image that I like. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and put it up at the top. And if I want to center it, I can move it towards the center there. And you'll see that that purple line appears. It lets me know that I've centered my text in my image. Right? So I'm going to start there. Now I want to change the color of my text here. So I'm going to double click in here select this color bar here and it opens up the color wheels, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use this right slider to find the color that I wanna use, right? Maybe I want it to be blue, maybe a little more pink, green. Let's go ahead and stick with red here and then I can click inside this big color box and then find the hue that I specifically want. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to that brighter red there. And then if you go to the left side up here, you can click here in the font box and scroll down and see all the fonts that are available to you inside of Media Place. 
then I'm gonna go ahead and just select, uh, let's go with this guy, all right? So now that I've got my uh, font selected and my color changed, I can resize this text by clicking on the resizing squares here and then making it to the size that I'd like. And then of course I can always double click in here and let's just call this our skate company, right? It's like our brand name. And then what I can do is this uh, section right here, when I select my text again, this allows me to adjust the opacity. So if I bring down my minus, then it obviously brings down the opacity. And if I bring it back up, it then makes it at full opacity, right? Which is pretty cool. And then I do have the option to adjust my alignment to the right or to the left, right, or center. And then I can also add shadow, right? So maybe I wanna add just a little bit of shadow, make it pop off the background. What I can do is I could adjust the X axis there and I can also adjust the Y if I wanna bring it down a little bit, right? You can give it this cooler effect there or you can just make it really simplistic and keep it there, right? So a lot of different things you can do inside of Media Place to kind of quickly add text, um, edit on the fly, make quick changes, and things like that, right? And last thing is you can also right to left. So let me click off of this so you can see a little better. And then I can, you know, flip it around right to left or bring it back right to left, right? So just different options, different tricks and things that you can do inside of Media Place. All right, so we've got some text added there. We added some shadows. And again, you get to that by selecting your text and all the properties for that pop up in the top there for you to adjust. All right. So now let's move down the line and let's go ahead and click on image. Now an image, it allows you to embed another image or an SVG or whatever file type you want inside of the already existing picture that we're editing, right? So let's go ahead and say, you know what? I forgot to add the logo to, uh, to my skate company. So I'm gonna click image and then it brings up all the images inside of your media play system, right? So I'm gonna go to my SVGs, which I already have open here. And let's say that this is my logo, right? I go ahead and import it in automatically for me. And I can then resize this down and I can then place this at the bottom of my picture so that everybody knows that this is my company's brand right here. And I can give that a little home to live right there, right? So a pretty quick and efficient way to quickly just correct something or add something into your images or even be creative and just make it even better than what it was. All right, so now let's move on to our last two elements here, which are the rectangle and the circle, All right? So I'm gonna click on the rectangle element here and it's gonna open up a rectangle box for me, right? Now, how can I incorporate this is it's pretty cool. So I can then, maybe I want to uh, emphasize my skin company name, right? So what I can do is resize my, um, my rectangle to about the size of my skate company itself. And then just bring this on top of my skate company and then I can center it up in the same way that I centered my text, right? Now I can change the color of this box too by selecting the color um, box here. And then I want to make this maybe a little darker, right? And then I can adjust my opacity by clicking on the opacity icons or make it a little darker, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it, I'm gonna have it sit right there. Um, you can add drop shadow to that as well, but I'm not gonna do that. Now I do want my skate company to be on top of the box, right? Cause right now it's sitting behind it. So what I can do is I can right click my rectangle and I can say send to back. And then it will go behind my, um, skate company name, but then it also kind of pops off the screen a little bit more. And it, the cool thing is too, is let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit here. So you can kind of see what's going on is that if I put my cursor, it turns into crosshairs on these circles, I can round out the actual rectangle itself, right? So it's not so square. So it looks a little more natural and it fits the environment that it's in, right? All right. So let's go ahead and go back to fit here. So that's what it'll look like using, utilizing the rectangle, right? So you can see how it kind of stands out. It pops off the background. And of course you could change the colors and, and be even more specific with what you want. Maybe you want to stay on brand, that kind of thing, which is pretty cool. Now let's add a circle real fast and let's do the same thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scale this down and I'm just going to have it come so that my logo, it's sitting there behind my logo. Now I'm going to change the background of this too, and I'm going to turn it a little black there. And then let's go ahead and bring the opacity down. And what I can do this here too, is I can then uh, send to back as well. So now it's sitting behind my logo there, but it's kind of separating it from the background into itself, right? So pretty cool features um, for the elements, right? You got text, image, and you can add some shapes, rectangle and circles to kind of enhance some of those things inside of your pictures, right? Which is really cool. Now let's go down to transformations. Transformations are really cool. So I can flip this horizontally, right? or I can flip it vertically. So really quick on the fly things that I need to do really fast, I can do this right here with the media place. I can rotate it left and I can rotate it right, right? So really cool. 
and really fast, efficient ways to transform your images right here in Media Place. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up a transparent image, right? All right, so now I'm gonna talk about adding a background. So say you have a transparent background, and I say this because this feature only works with your image that is transparent. So if I wanted to add a quick solid color background, I could turn this on, and then there you can see it already added a black background for me. Now I can click on the color option here, and then I can drag this down to whatever color I want it to be, right? So it's a pretty cool way to shift the colors up for a background really fast. Uh, maybe I want to add some text onto here and then export it out for something quick for social, right? That's a quick way to do it, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it this cool color right here and then leave it as is. All right, so that is a really cool way to add a background. And then of course you do have the options here below that to save as a PNG or a JPEG. And then of course, adjust your quality slider there for that type of export that you want. Now let's move down and we can talk about the different colors that you can manipulate inside of Media Place. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out here and let's go ahead and let's open up this image right here. So I'm gonna double click it and it's gonna open up my edit page for me. And now I have the options to edit this image inside of Media Place. So I could normalize my colors or I can manually go in and adjust the brightness by using the slider bars here. So I could adjust the contrast, I could increase saturation um, and so forth, right? Lightness, sharpness. I can adjust the color rotation and give it some really cool different looks there to kind of enhance creativity if I wanted to. But I'm gonna go ahead and zero these all out. And then of course, you can always utilize the filters that are down below. And so I could click here and have a preset for me already. Go Vintage, Technicolor, um, go Polaroid. And then from there, you can go ahead and adjust your parameters even more using your uh, color controls here inside of Media Place, right? So really cool and, and really awesome features inside of media place that you can do to enhance your images and make them even better, right? All right, now I do have the options to save new, so I could save this with right next to the original that we have. I can overwrite that, so it just overwrites the entire image itself, so this is the image that would, we would have inside of our, our library. Or I can export this out um, to a hard drive, to an external cloud or something like that, so that way I can then share it uh, into my social media platforms if I want or email it out, or however I wanna utilize it, I can then take that file and use it to my need, right? So super cool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here, and let's go ahead and open up this city picture here. And we're gonna move over from the edit page and navigate to the compress page. Now the compress page is really cool because it also allows you to save as a JPEG or a PNG, right? You have those two options. You can set your compression quality, right? You can take this down. So let's go to like, you know, 42%, right? So my original file size is 11 megabytes. My new file size is eight, right? Maybe you have a certain uh, file size you need to hit. This is a good way so you can visually see where you're at, but also you can see what the compression is doing, right? So let's go ahead and zoom in here, right? Let's get a little further so we can really see what's going on. And if I, I can kind of see a little bit of the, so this is the original and this is the compressed side, right? So now if I take this down to, let's go to 15%, you can start to see the compression is really starting to take effect into my image, right? And if I go even farther, you'll see it really starts to degrade the quality, all right? So it's a really cool way that you can see, you know, you know, before and after, right? You can see that even between the, the word city, it's, uh, it's getting a little bit of compression there. So that way you can visually see the compression that's happening before you export, that way you don't have to keep going back and forth, trying to hit a certain file size. Um, and then of course you can save it out as a new image inside of Media Place, so you've got your original and then your compressed version, or you can overwrite it all together, or you can export it out um, as a JPEG or a PNG, which is pretty cool. All right, so that is the compressed feature. Um, now I wanna go over one more thing in that. Let's go back outside of here and let's go to my SVGs, right? So we have an edit feature for the SGV, SVGs, which is really cool, right? So let's click on, uh, let's choose this camera right here. And now let's go to our edit page. All right, so now I have access to edit my SVG colors right here in Media Place, right? So quickly on the fly, I can then change, maybe I don't like this red border on my SVG, I can click in here in the color box and then scroll to like a blue color, right? I like that. Um, then maybe I want to change this yellow at the bottom and I wanna make it more of an orangey kind of color. And then of course I can get more specific by dragging the orange colors around and adjusting the hues from there, right? So it's a really cool, fast and efficient way to change colors of your SVG file right inside of Media Place. Now, if I do save as a PNG or a JPEG, I have the options to adjust the quality level. 
And then I also can add a quick background on the fly, like a solid color background. So if I turn this on, right now I have a white background in there, but if I select the color box, I can then choose, maybe I wanna go a black background. Maybe you wanna change the color to a green or a different, whatever color is fitting for your project, you can choose, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this white um, for now. And then I can resize the image if I want, right? So this SVG file is 1920 by 1920, so I could then scale this down if I want, make it a little larger, whatever I need to fit my project needs, I can do very simply in MediaPlace itself. All right, so then you can always save new, right? So save it as a new file right next to the original file. You can overwrite the, the SVG you have and save over it, or you can export out this SVG file to your hard drive or um, somewhere in the cloud, right? So super fast, super efficient way. All right, so that is an in-depth look at the image editing features inside of MediaPlace. Stay tuned for future tutorials, and as always, keep creating.